Good morning, Thomas. 20, 20 seconds. All right. I got to go get my phone. I'm going to get my coffee. Okay, Sally, let's pretend like I didn't just run to go get my coffee and a phone and you didn't just leave to go get a coffee and this hasn't been recording the whole time. Good morning, Thomas. Morning, Sally. How's it going? Pretty good. And I just, we, we just now started this recording, right? Oh, judge, brilliant. I haven't talked to you since the last time. That was I, just 30 I, seconds ago. It's been a long time. Hey, I got a, I've got kind of a quandary. Is it, is it about how much, how much my waist has grown since I last needed to find a pair of pants? Because that's have what I've realized. Have you well, gotten fat? Oh, I'm, I'm getting there. So let me I'm, see your I, belly. No. Back to my quandary. Mm -hmm. I've been listing a lot of, you know, jackets and coats and stuff, but I have a pile of coats and jackets that I have not listed yet. I've gotten even gone as close to putting numbers on some of them, but it's because. I really don't know how to assign value to, to coats and jackets. And I have some crap here, I think, and I think I have some really good stuff. Would you help me kind of sort it out? Of course, believe it or not, coats and jackets next to sweaters, favorite clothing category. What I'm kind of hoping that the takeaway will be for me and maybe for others too, is that Next time you're at the bins or in a thrift store and you see a coat or a jacket that, you know, it's not, we're not talking about North Face and that kind of stuff. We're talking about regular coats and jackets. You might have a clue of how even to look it up to see if it's good. Because I know sometimes you've told me that brand matters, sometimes content matters, obviously condition matters, but I, I get confused. So um, without, without judgment, I'm going to show you some of the ones that I've picked up and kind of help me figure out if I, I can't throw them away at this point. Well, I can, I can do all those things. All right, good. Let's start. Wait, wait, wait. Accept the withholding of judgment. I know. Because that, no, that, that, that is here. ridiculous. Um, anyway, <laughs> this, this stunning number here, I picked it up. Because when I used to ride, it looks exactly like one of the authentic Outback coats. Yep. It's, it's a nice zip. It is not oil skin. It has a button-in liner that I thought made it neat. Okay. It has everything going for it except the brand. It's okay, what do we got? Outbrook, not Outback, Outbrook. And it's yep. gone is polyester so, some kind of a coating over it but it's not wax yep so what do you uh what do you what do you think that coat is worth and why did you pick it up i picked it up because i thought my it might be a hidden gem and i thought out broke out back maybe they're close to the same thing and i didn't look it up ah, i didn't look it up tricky I, the reason i didn't is because i got it for five bucks and i figured even on a bad day i can get something out of it what I think now, Thomas, I honestly don't think if I put $39 on it, I'd be in the ballpark. I think 39 free shipping would be in the ballpark. But if you charge oh, shipping on that, if you charge shipping on that, I don't think it's going to sell. Just yeah. because that I think is, that's I think the top of the range for that coat. Wow. And it's since got it's got a nice well, wool lining, it's got wool lining. Yeah, but it's, I mean, it's not, it's not like the the lowest the lowest level of coat brand that I would pick up that looks like that would be like Banana Republic, and I would expect a Banana Republic coat of that style to sell for around forty to fifty bucks, and I could charge shipping, but that's a rarity. That is a similar coat but a worse brand, which means that the best I could get with shipping would be something less than I would charge for that or for that original Banana Republic coat. Okay. So even though even though it's featured out, it's got the removable lining, it has a hood, it's pretty cool looking. It's just not something that's going to come up when someone searches because people aren't looking for that brand of coat, which you means you got to, which means you got to sell it with keywords. You got to sell with keywords and item specifics. 
and hope that someone that is looking for a trench coat, because that's I think the that's I think what I would predominantly call it. If you're looking for a trench coat of that size with those features, you'd hope that they'd be interested in it and that it can compete use. with other items. I picked it up because it's a it's a big size. It's a good size. What size is it? It is women's 10. That's a good size. I think I think the best women's sizes when it comes to coat is between eight to 14. Probably okay. similar with everything, but I find that a big coat um, takes longer to sell and a small coat takes less time than a super big coat to sell. And what's really nice is a smaller coat takes up less room and can often fit in a padded flat rate while yeah. a big coat cannot. Okay, this one is by, yes. Okay. A large, it has an offset zipper. It's a raincoat. It says professionally dry clean, but it's made of polyester. Yep, it's pretty standard. And it has a nice, it has a nice detail. It has a nice belt on the back. And it's, it's a really good design with the like peplum kind of look on the back. What? What? What'd you, what'd you say? Peplum? Oh, peplum, like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the kind of frilly, yeah. You know, the folds, the, the folds that are built in. I'm not telling you anything new. Okay. Um, so what do you think I should? I, okay, I think that I would list this for about $29. See, that's the difference. See, it's guess. But I think what really separates that is, and maybe I'm, what size is it? Sorry, let's ask some more questions. A large, women's large. Okay, good size. So the fact that it is a good size, really cool pattern, um, and is in good condition, any stains whatsoever, if there's one stain that dramatically affects it. Nope, no stains, no pulls, no nothing. Okay. 30 bucks plus shipping sounds fair to me. I think if you do 30 plus shipping, it'll sell within a week. Okay, and it, you know what? It's the the uh, it's even still tacked tacked down. It's never been worn, but I'm gonna. Oh, the here. back. You're talking about the back? No, the front, right here. See, it has a little one sided thing. Isn't that weird? Oh, show show the show the viewers what you mean by tacked down. Okay, it's got a tiny little thread that's holding it down. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Yeah, which means it's. Never been worn. But or I if it it's new. I just hate to sell something as new. Yeah. But I would definitely take a picture of that. The other thing that usually means that it's brand new is on a blazer or a coat when it's single vented or double vented in the back, there'll be an X stitch across. Yes, the... it is. It still is. It You're still right. is? Yeah, yes. that's another one. So either of those indicate that you got a jacket that may have been worn once at the most probably wasn't worn because that per and reason I say if it was it might have been worn once is because that's somebody that didn't know that that's the first thing you do when you get one of those coats if you're if you're going to take the tags off you cut those vents open right okay so that means that the person who is wearing that coat has not a really great understanding of what to do when they get a nice piece of clothing okay they're not this wearing it very often this brand, it's an extra large. It's nice satin lined. It's but the brand is Bongo, B-O-N-G-O. -O. Yep, not great. It is made of polyester and a little bit of wool. It does have yep. a hood. I picked it up because it was cheap when I picked it up. I, I don't oh. pick up any, any coats unless they're cheap because I don't know what I'm looking for. Okay, what is cheap to you? Means I'm probably going to sell it for twenty five dollars. Yeah, no, but no, but cheap doesn't mean what you sell for. Cheap is what you pay for it. So what oh, is cheap $4. to you? Four. Four dollars. That's still not something. I don't know if someone handed that. Eh, eh, maybe, maybe. Okay, maybe four dollars. That's defensible. What would you? What are you going to price it at? I think I'm going to. Price it at $24.99. And yep, that sounds about right. Okay. 
again, I, I think what's clear to note is that none of these coats are bangers. All right, you want to see a banger? Oh, yeah, you know it. It's what I live for. Okay. That and pickles. I think this is a good coat. Okay. The brand is Cinzia, C-I-N-Z-I-A, Roca, R-O-C-C-A. That's a nice coat, girl. It has a nice inner label. What's the label say? I don't, it's sewn it's in and it says, fabric made in Italy by Piana. Laurel Piana, okay. And oh. what, kind of, what kind of fabric is it? Let's see. I know it's, uh, it, I think it's cashmere. It usually, it usually says under the Laurel Piana thing. Oh, yeah. Super fine wool. Okay. Yep. So that is a $175 coat. Why? So anything that's got that little Laurel Piana thing on it, almost an automatic pickup as long as it's reasonably priced. Laurel Piana is the finest. I don't know the finest, but it's the most marketed, super extremely fancy wool mill. They in Italy. They carry oh, the okay. fine. They carry the finest fabrics in the world. Like they will make vicuña things. I was looking yesterday. It feels, it feels at, like it feels like silk. It's so it's so fine. Exactly. I, I might almost say that the super fine super fine wools that they use are occasionally softer than the cashmeres that they use. They're really- yeah, I thought it was cashmere. I paid $4 for it. Yeah, that's, that's, that's probably one of your best pickups of the year right there. And I picked no it doubt. up because you told me to go for a feel. Yep, yep. And the size is 12. So that coat costs several thousand dollars new. It should sell for more, but there's, Oh, absolutely. Do you want to, you want me to look up what it costs new? No, no, no. It just made me feel bad. So what will I mark it? 175? Yeah. To $200. Yeah. Wow. So, okay. so if, so if it, if it didn't have the Laurel Piana, it would be about a hundred, but it has the Laurel Piana. So I'm guessing it's 175. So do I need to make sure that I put that in the yes. description? Yep. You put in the title. So the title is Cinzia Rocco Women's whatever, uh, peacoat, um, gray. Did you say K-E-Y or peacoat? P-E-A. Peacoat, peacoat. Um, women's, no, not women's. Um, super fine, no, Laura Piana, super fine wool. And then any made other characteristics? Italy? No, Italy? not made in Italy. Um, I don't know, notch lapel, large lapel or something. Figure oh, it out. It. Okay. But those, so that's some, that is, I'm jealous of that pickup. Okay. I'll show you one you won't be jealous of. <laughs> I, I might've gotten it in a free pile. I'm not sure. This has okay. everything. I shouldn't have bought it. I, it, this is fake. It at least has a cool ombre pattern. Well, it's supposed to look like some animal, I think. The brand is Vine, V-I-N-E Street, which I've never heard of. Nope. It's a vest. If it were a woolly vest or something, I think. So I think I'm just not even going to list it. What do you think? I toss it personally. Yeah, I think I will. I'll put it down in my toss pile. I'm going through all kinds of stuff. So tell me when there's when you want to see something that's more interesting. Okay. No, no, no. Let's let's do it. I mean, there's no okay. leather jacket. I quit picking them up because they're too heavy. And they don't sell very well. They don't. If you find like a 
double RL vintage cowhide jacket, okay. you know, that you're looking that'll sell for $5,000. This is That's, Hill and Archer. Yeah, exactly. That is a $30 coat on a good day plus shipping. 44. You're not. It's a size 44. That's a good size. That's a good size for men's 40 to 46, I think are the pretty, pretty good sizes when it comes to blazers and stuff. Okay. I don't, I don't see a lot of, and I think that's because to be totally stereotypical, to be totally stereotypical, smaller people, I think probably tend to do better in life. So, and, and people that are quote unquote doing better in life tend to be wearing suits. And if you are doing better in life, wearing suits, you have to buy them. And when you're buying suits, you have to wear one that fits you. So you get one that fits you and that happens to be a good size. God, that sounded like Byron Leftwich yesterday talking about uh, scoring more points. Okay, this is, I think I'm going to keep it myself. It's a okay. Michael, Michael Kors XL. It has, I think, a cool offset zipper. That is a, I like, that's flashy. I thought it was too. I thought I might take it to Paris with this. I love that blue. I'm such a sucker for that blue. That's cobalt blue, isn't it? Uh, just put blue in there. Cobalt blue, yeah. But yeah, cobalt blue. I, I would put. If I had to describe it and I was you know, needed more characters, I'd put royal blue in the title. Oh, yeah, it's more like a royal. Uh, it's a wool blonde. Yeah. Yeah, I'm oh. guessing 60 bucks. Really? Oh, maybe I better look. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You may. So there's two Michael Kors. There's, well, four Michael Kors. There's Michael Kors that just has Michael Kors made in China. There's Michael Michael Kors, which is shitty, the worst. Mine's that, Michael, that has Michael Kors. Michael Michael Kors. Then there's Kors by Michael Kors. That's slightly better, but gone. They stopped making that. And then there's Michael Kors made in Italy. Nope, Michael, Michael Kors. Michael. Okay. If it was Michael Kors made in Italy, it's a $200 coat. But this one, the Michael Michael Kors is shitty, right? Yeah, it's nothing, nothing special. So you're looking Good. at. I'm wearing it to, it to France when we go. Good. Does it have the logo on it? Because, because you know, those snarky Parisians will just, they won't even serve you food. It ha Yeah, it has MK zippers and stuff like that. Ooh, good, good, good. Look, good. it has kind of modem sleeves. Anyway, all right, well, good. It's cool. I like it. Also, are you size XL? I figured you were a size large. What? I figured you were a size large, not a size XL. See, that's a compliment. Well, if I wear sweaters under it. Oh, it's true. Yeah. Good point. Okay. This is back to Crapville, I think. Good. It's what we're looking for. This is love, Roxy. Love to hear it. R O X Y, Roxy. Yeah. It has cool metal buttons. Yeah, that's, that's great. It's a size small. Great buttons. Huge, huge, big win. Yeah, I can tell what you're saying. <laughs> and it's uh, wool, 40 wool, 52 poly or something like that. So I shouldn't have picked this up, why? Uh, because it's not, a, I mean, I'll ask you, you tell me, why should you have not picked that up? Well, I think I should have picked it up because all of these things I didn't pay, except for one, I didn't pay over $5 for. And I, I tell you why I wouldn't pick it up now. It's because it's a small and they move slowly. It's a brand that doesn't, uh, when I looked it up, finally, you no, know, it's going to be, I think it's like a $25 jacket. Yep. If and it I, sells. Huh? If it sells. Yeah, it will eventually, and I'll get more than five dollars for it. But would I buy it again now? No, I wouldn't. I would let it lay. Okay, are you ready to be entertained? I once, uh, when I went to Italy in the Colosseum, I uh, I have a really good video 
of me doing that in the Coliseum with an umbrella as a sword. Really? There's a, uh, there's a little girl. Cause I, I was just like, all right, we're doing it. My friend videotaped me doing it. And there's a little girl in the video who's looking at me like, what are you doing? <laughs> hey, you have seen this coat before and it's one of the coolest coats I've ever bought and I don't know how to price it. Okay, what is it? It is that Burberry with the fantastic label. Oh yeah, yeah. This label is about five inches square. The dope label. It's silk, it has a horse, charging horse. And it says Burberry's with an S on it with no apostrophe. Yep, that's true. That's pro P R O R S U M collection. Awesome. Yep. So I, I've never found something in the Porsum collection. I think it's like higher, like in the world of Burberry. There's Burberry London, Burberry Burberry's is vintage, and then I think Burberry Brit, and then Burberry Porsum. I've never found a porcelain piece. I don't know what to price it at, but the fact that it's the only brand, one of the only brands that doesn't really carry a lot of high powered anything when it high powered value when it comes to vintage is Burberry's, unless of course it has the Nova check. Um, so that's not something that if it was just a Burberry's trench coat in perfect condition, you'd get about 120 to 150. I don't know about the pour something, guessing it elevates a little bit, might be a $200 coat, but it's really simple. And as long as there's no staining on it, you're good to go. And if there is, you can straight soak that. I, I did this. I had a couple nope. Burberry's coats that there's were- not a mark on it. Not a okay. Mark. I had a couple Burberry's coats that were covered in stains, all kinds of stuff. And I was questioning what to do with them. I took out the removable liner because removable liner, if it has it, ups the value. <laughs> And mm -hmm. I just oxy cleaned them and they came, every stain came out. It made it from a $50 coat to a $150 coat. So what will I list this for? I mean, I've had it now for seven, eight months. Without Let me look it up. It. Let me look it up. I'll look it up on this phone. I tried to find that label. I did everything from Google Lens to looking up Burberry history. I could not find it. It's a well, huge just... triangular crochet. Uh, Embroidered label. This is great videoing. Let me see yeah. if I can get in here. I don't know if it'll show it. Oh, I got the button done, dummy. Does it have a Nova check lining? It has no lining. Okay. And there's the label. Is it double-breasted or single-breasted? It's got one row of buttons. Okay, so it's single-breasted. By the way, double-breasted is in right now. Okay. So double-breasted is worth more. If that Look was a that double- That whole label is embroidered. I know, it's totally incredible. If it was a, if it was, Double breasts, it'd be two hundred and fifty dollars. I, I really, I don't want to keep it forever either. I gotta tell you. I know, I, I, I know, I know, I know. I'm looking. It looks to be about one hundred and twenty dollars. Okay. Yep. I paid ten for it. Hmm. I paid ten dollars for it. Yeah, you, you won on that one. Nice find. Okay, so. Let's look at this guy. You may have looked at it for me before, but I somehow just didn't do anything with it. This is a really heavy rancher's Marlboro jacket. The brand is Charles Klein. Who's that? Ann Klein's brother, Charles, K-L-E-I-N. How uh, is it real shearling or not? Yep, it's real shearling. Oh, it is real shearling. Yeah. Does it have buttons? Yes. Okay. Are they made of anything special? Like buffalo or antler or anything? Oh, it, is the hood shearling as well? Yes. Wait a minute. I might be lying about the shearling. Let me see what it says. Not liar, liar. 
The shell is genuine leather. The body lining is acrylic. The sleeve lining is nylon. Okay, so no, 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 no. So, okay, so the cuffs, the cuffs are, are, are shearling. Nothing shearling. Yeah, no. So uh, flip the front over. I don't know what you mean, like this? No, uh, fold it in. Fold the flap the other way so you can see what the out, yeah, okay. So, okay, so that flap, the whole thing is leather. If it's leather, it means that the inside could be shearling unless they took it off and put acrylic slash polyester on it. It says so body you, lining acrylic. I know, okay, here, I'll show you. Uh, I have a coat, I have Isabella's old coat right here that has a very similar, it's a very similar situation. <laughs> Okay, so here's her coat, right? See it? Yeah. Okay, so she liked it, but she's got too many coats. So she said I should sell it. So this one says, and it's got, it's double breasted and it has buffalo horn buttons, which are really cool. But if you look at it, if you look at the top here at the lining, see how this part, is brown and then it switches to black. Yeah. So there's a seam here. There's a seam where they took out the shearling and then stitched in the acrylic because the inside says over here, genuine leather shell. And then over here says pile lining shell, 100% polyester. Um, hair 50% different kinds of acrylic. And it says special cleaning leather and suede, which means that the outside of this- Wait a minute, look in the sleeve. The sleeve is acrylic. That so, is shearling. It is shearling, right? It is shearling because the sleeve is the part that's acrylic. The inside of the sleeve, when you go up a ways. Yeah, the inside, yeah, the inside is, but the edge of it isn't. Right. Okay. So it's shearling. Yeah. So it is shearling. You, you can legitimately say it's shearling, even though the lining is a different thing. So this is, so I would legitimately call this a absolute shearling coat. So part of this coat is wool. Part of it is, is acrylic. And the fact that it's leather will tell you if, if all it says is that it's leather, you have a shearling coat because when you have a when you have a dead sheep, you have a you have the leather, you have the hide, and then on the outside of the hide, you have the you have the the wool, just like a a, a yeah, lamb. Yeah, but I can pull apart the shearling from the outside. Okay. So that shearling is not attached to the back of the leather. Okay. Well, then it's not. Okay. Then it's not. How much can I sell this for? It's going to take a fortune to ship it. No. Oh, yeah, because you're in the middle of nowhere. I mean, you'd put that in a uh, large flat rate box, 20 bucks. So you have to charge 25 if you want to break even on it. Um, 50 bucks. And it's women's. Yeah, I know. So it's lamb leather. Um, you know, it which is says, nice. Small, but I swear to God, I am not. I mean, a small would swim in this. Look. Oh my God. Yeah, and I mean, we've already decided that you're an XL. So. I would buy an XL in this kind of a coat, but not. I mean, I this one is almost too long in the sleeves for me. Yeah, so I can I'm tell. Gonna put, I'm going to put women's small, generous. Cool. And 50 bucks? 50 bucks. You do a little bit more research, maybe get 70, but you didn't hit the 200, $250 jackpots like you can with some of those shearling coats. Okay, so now we're gonna look at an old friend of mine. That you told me what to list it for and I don't even know how to describe it. It is Prada Milano. You already went through it and said it's genuine. Yep. It is pretty small. 
It's got hidden buttons. And I got it from the bins for a buck and a half. And it's just a blazer. It's not much special. You're probably looking at about a hundred bucks, which is too bad because it's product and that thing retails for 1500, but I think that's all you're going to get out of it. Why? Last time you thought I'd get more. I know, but I just listed a men's um, Prada, Prada blazer. And that was really the, that was like the top of the end. That was the top end, which I was really kind of saddened by. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think that's why I didn't list it because I didn't believe it. This is made in Italy, so I'll, I'll have you help me with some keywords on it, but I will go ahead and list it now. I just didn't, I just didn't feel good about it. Yeah, no, I, I totally understand. The first few times you sell that stuff, you're like, I just don't believe it. And then you realize that how many people are making fake Prada blazers? Like that's just not a faked item. Other things, absolutely. Blazers, not buying it. Especially, especially something that doesn't say Prada on it. Fake items are loud items. They're ones that you want people to know that you're wearing an item and that it's probably fake. Okay, this is a really neat coat. It has leather stri stripes up on the shoulders. It's got padded shoulders, so it kind of makes it look like a 40s kind of a vibe. Yep. It is Fern Croft. Yep. Again, nothing special. And it's 20% cashmere. Ooh, that's a good thing. How long is it? Full length? Yeah. Yeah, full it's full length. length. Yeah. Double breasted or single breasted? Double. And it looks to be pretty well made. Yeah. This of a discoloration just a little bit on the on the lining and i think on the on, lining yeah not a big deal on the lining but not a big deal i'm gonna go with uh 50 bucks on that one and i would really stress that it's cashmere lined and double breasted those are the okay. two major selling points for it right now shall i shall i fix the holes in the satin lining of the pocket it's not hard no i wouldn't I wouldn't, but then again, I'm not good at it. You're good at it. So that's the difference. That's okay. that's one that's a skill that you bring to the table that I do not. Okay. Okay. I've never heard of this brand. It's a looked a lot like the coat that she had. Jofeld, J-O-F-E-L-D, women's size 12. It says uh, Joe Feld by Forstman, F O R S T M A N N. Okay, sounds really old. Really? What? What's it made of? Yeah, I don't. I don't identify. If I don't identify something, it's usually either really old or beyond fancy. And it's I'm going to guess it's not beyond fancy. It says wool the... blend. Yeah, exactly. If it was fancy, it'd be something better. Uh, so you got a you got a long coat, wool blend. Double You're breasted. looking at a double breasted. You're looking at a uh, forty dollar coat. Probably probably fifty shipped. So thirty five dollars. Thirty five dollars. And the reason for this is because there's so many wool coats out there. That yeah. why would you buy a wool blend one? And well, especially this is kind of stylish looking. That's the only thing it has going for it, I think. I mean, yeah. it's really, it looks really 40 ish. Yeah. But are you going to buy a really nice 40 ish looking coat? Or are you going to buy one that's pretty crappy? And how are you going to find one that's like that? Well, that's this, the, is, this is a beautiful coat. It's I the think one about this morning. Yep. Yeah, I think you got a banger on your hands there. You know what? It looks like Bakelite buttons, but I don't know how to tell. You got to get a, you got a cleaning compound and you rub it on it and it tells you. What from you what, it? from, if, so you, I think it's 401, you get 401 cleaner, you wipe it on a cloth, wipe it on the button. And if it turns a certain color or reacts oh, oh. in a certain way, I didn't know then that. it's Bakelite. Yeah, it's not. You're not looking at a huge like 
uptick if it is worth those. Because people that are looking for a coat don't usually care that it's Bakelite. But it's honestly, I would I would put here, made in Italy. We already talked about this this morning. It's what and it's FACIS, F A C I S, three yep. brother Leon. And so, is it single? It's single breasted, right? Uh, yes, it is. Okay. And there's not a spot on it, nothing. No, uh, no moth attacks? Nothing. Man, you got, uh, looking at it, there's a lot of coats. I'm going one, 120 to 150 plus shipping. Okay, that's kind of what we thought this morning. That one's got really nice big lapels that are in right now. Yep. Okay, let's look at some down here that may not be quite as exciting. Ooh, buddy, don't get me excited. Okay, I said not quite as exciting. We're going to go with some that I'm not sure I would buy, knowing what I know now, but you tell me. Again, yeah. they're all cheap, so I'm not, I'm not getting hurt. Brass plum. I thought, wow, look at that. It looks like a pea coat. It's brass plum. It has a neat color inside the thing. It's nicely lined. It's double breasted, but it's Nordstrom brass plum. Yeah, you're you, you're not you're not looking at a at a real win there. No, but uh, and I said I I'm pickier. I would not buy it now. Good. So what do you, I'm going to guess that I'd put that along the lines of that Roxy and that Bongo coat you picked up. Exactly. Which is to say, not a coat I would ever pick up unless it is a super, super cool design, really something, cool fabric, something along those lines. Hey, this is, I, have, I need to brush it, it's Celebrity Pink. It's uh, a poly wool blend. It's double breasted. It's short. It's a large size. And I think it has, you know, a little button detail on the back. But looks like I used to have a hood going with it or something. So um, I would probably list this about $19. Yep, that's right along uh, in the don't pick up category right there. Yep, okay. Gotcha. One more and then I'll move you to one that might be a little bit exciting. Ooh, buddy. I have that's two good. that look very much alike. One of them is a jeans by Buffalo. Okay. Yes. I'm guessing that's like 80% polyester, 15% acrylic, and 5% wool. Uh, nylon, nylon wool. 30% wool, 16 acrylic, Ooh. a little bit of nylon. Oh, wait a minute. Man. The exterior is 45 poly, 30% lana. Oh, that's just, it's just in a different language. That's right? wool. Yeah. So um, I picked it up because I'm kind of into these offset zippers. Yep, that's and a cool thing. It has some buttons. It's in really good shape. Uh, it has a big collar. I don't even know what I listed it for, but I listed it, at, you know, at the low end of what they were going for. And I probably would pick this up again at the same price. Okay. Because there's nothing wrong with it. Cool. And one more that looks an awful lot like that. I can't say the word A E R O P O A S or a postal. So yeah, that's how you say it. So I, as a kid, didn't have enough money for that brand. There were two brands that everybody wore. One of them was Abercrombie, and the other one was Aeropostale. And since I couldn't afford either of those brands, I enjoyed calling them Abercrombie and Aeropostale which are high, you know, those would be high-end French and Italian brands then. Um, but I never had them. I remember at one point we had my brother, the last time my brother and I like fought, like fisticuff fought, 
was over a was over a yellow long sleeve old navy shirt that said old navy on it because we <laughs> because we both were so like insecure about the terrible clothes that we had to wear and we wanted to fit in so bad high school is great yeah it is. <laughs> um i showed them i got pregnant and quit ha okay ah got him <laughs> i showed them didn't i why does this have two different tags on it mm, we better two different tags is it new and no, I, didn't, I mean, it has two different of my tags on it. <laughs> oh. uh, this is, so anyway, it's nice, it's heavy, it zips as well as buttons, snaps, and has toggles. You know, like Man, toggles. things I, got everything. I don't know. I think I probably listed it for about 35. Sounds about right. Sounds about right. It sounds like you have a, if you have the storage for coats, and by storage, I mean, you have way, you're kind of over-equipped, the proverbial you. Coats are great. You can buy a whole ton of coats real cheap during the off season or really any time at the bins and just hold on to them and you'll make a pretty decent mint when the season hits. <laughs> Love a good coat. <laughs> They have a really, really great 100% cashmere men's jacket. I've got it at home because I um, I need to find a button to replace on it. Okay. This, good idea. Any brand on it or just a cashmere coat? Yeah, there is. And I, I can't remember what it is, but it was a good one. That's why I went to the troll. This is oh. Evan Pacone. Is that anything? So Evan Pacone. Back in the 70s, 60s, 70s, was sold at Saks Fifth. It used to be a totally elite brand. And just like all brands, it has a life. I don't know how it died, but it died. I have a bunch of really cool old, um, like, blouses and pants and skirts that have amazing patterns on them. But believe it or not, have not sold as well as I was really hoping they would. Okay, this is, um, this is a women's... I got it for half price, so I paid $4 for it. It's petites, which is probably not the best thing in the world. Petite sucks. I know. So I'm going to list it, but I'm going to list it really cheap for probably about $15. Yep. I hate petites. It's gotten to the point where if something's petite, I don't pick it up anymore. Yeah, I, I don't it, think I will. Either. Isabella, we went to a, uh, when I first met her, we went to, the the Salvation Army in Ann Arbor, which is really good. And there was a new tags, Lauren Ralph Lauren like blouse set. And someone sent me a message. I was looking at it. Um, and she ended up fitting into a 12 petite. Wow. So like who even like no one knows their petite size. It's just a guess every time. Okay, this is a jacket that I thought I didn't have. It, it's missing a button and I can replace it. It is, the reason I said it, I thought it was good is it's 100% pure camel hair. Nice. The brand is Leopold Price and Rolly, R-O-L-L-E. It says Barrister Houston. Okay, so made it's old, right? Made in USA. Yeah, so that's. Show me that. Can you bring it over here to show the tag? Because either, again, that's either something that's old, because they used camel a lot back in the day, or something that's incredibly high end and brand new and somehow got here from. No, that's old. So uh, those old coats, you sell by saying that they're camel hair, not by putting the brand in there. Okay. I might include the brand, like maybe, probably not even in the title. Um, and the one that you would include would be the Leopold and blankety blank blank, not the Heralds of Houston. Okay. Um, but those sell for anywhere between 40 and up. Okay. So I, I, that's about all, all I have the courage for today. So you, I heard you vaguely as I was off shopping saying that I do have unlimited storage. 
and it's dry and it's clean. So do you think when you said pick up jackets in the summer, and yes, because people are looking for lightweight stuff at the bins, they're not wanting to, they're not wanting heavy stuff. So should, what kind of jacket should I pick up at $1.29 a pound? So anything that's all wool, full length, all wool, will get you a minimum of $40, usually mm -hmm. plus shipping, full length. A lot of those will say made in Macedonia, made in Czech Republic, made in Moldova, made in Yugoslavia, and they're all from about the 70s and 80s. Those coats will never, will, they'll never get you like a super high amount. And the best they'll say is wool and cashmere. They'll never give you like any other stats. They'll never be a size. There's never any of that stuff. So it's harder to sell because you have to be able to like really know your size, know what a size is. Yeah, yeah, you got some charts. Um, those though, if you get them for cheap enough, usually pre usually pretty good. Other than that, if it's a brand that, that's identifiable and it's like a puffer coat, like let's say it's that David Bitten or it's, um, or Guess, something along those lines, I'd put those pretty similar. And it's a puffer coat, Mark Andrews, New York, those kind of things. If it's a puffer coat, it needs to be sterile. It can't have any of the discoloring that usually gets on the polyester um, that like soaks in and you can't get out. And you usually get around 30 bucks for those, but that's about the max. I think that since it looks like you're trying to leave, last thing I would say is a lot of people say that ASP doesn't matter. ASP doesn't matter. It's all about sell through. It's all about these other things. But if you can get stuff cheap enough, like if your coat, is three or four dollars, just like your top is, just like your jeans are. You're, it's even across the board. So as long as you keep your buy costs low and even, all of these ASP comparisons are valid. 